Hey, Harry Potter fans, Peter Kenneth here. Welcome back to the Potter Collector Channel, where we are a community of collectors. Today is another Lit Joy unboxing where we are opening up their Wizards Tournament box for their magical subscription. And we are going to take a big look at the box, but we have another box designed by Adrian Macho, who illustrated the 20th anniversary Slovak editions. And holy moly cannoli, this artwork is stunning. Let's take a look at each side of this box. So we see Harry Potter on his broomstick in the first task, and he is trying to get the golden egg from the Hungarian horntail, which we see right here. There are flames surrounding the horntail's nest and other eggs. All right, let's take a look at this side, which shows, I think that's Cedric Diggory and the Sphinx. Now we don't often see artwork about the Sphinx. It's really just mentioned in the books. We've never seen it in the movies. So that's kind of fun to see. And then here is Victor Crumb in his partially transfigured shark state. In the second task, we have Fleur Delacour and Ronald Weasley at the Yule Ball on this side. And on the bottom, we have the Goblet of Fire, and it is in the Great Hall. Just really, really nice stuff. Now, the Magical Subscription is a quarterly subscription service, so you get a new box every three months. This is gonna be the Wizards Tournament box, and inside of the Wizards Tournament box are all of the add-ons that you can add on to the box. So we're gonna take a look at the Litjoy Magical Alohomora Key Collection. There's lots to take a look at, so let's open up the box. This is going to be, yes, this is the spoiler sheet, so we're going to put that aside for now and start taking a look at everything. So I think this is the first time that I've received all of the add-ons inside of the subscription box itself. So I'm not quite sure what is an add-on, but we will find out when we look at the spoiler sheet which items came with the Wizards Tournament box and which ones were add-ons. So let's just go through all of it. I think this is the first time that we've done a mixed look at all of the things. All right, the first thing we have is a pin, and this is really well, not only displayed, but really well designed. Oh wow, she's even writing on it too. In Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, at the end we discover that Rita Skeeter gets all of her inside scoops and secrets when she is in her Animagus form. She's an unregistered Animagus and she becomes a beetle. And that's what we have right here, Rita Skeeter in her beetle Animagus form. And take a look, she is writing with a quill as a beetle on a piece of parchment. Really, really cool. But if we take a look at this packaging, what happens at the end of Goblet of Fire? Hermione Granger captures Rita Skeeter when she's in her beetle form and puts a non-breakable charm on the jar so Rita Skeeter can't just become a human again and just break the jar and escape. So the packaging is really, really cool and very book accurate. We see some twigs inside there, some leaves, and then the beetle pin itself, which is really, really nice. I love the gold accents on this pin. The beetle is wearing glasses and I'm pretty sure that in the books it's described that Rita Skeeter's beetle form has markings that look like glasses. I may be wrong about that but really fun that they have glasses on the beetle pin itself. Really nice pin and really clever design when it comes to the packaging. Ooh, we've got some more pins here. I love pins. What is this? All right, one thing at a time. Oh, fun! It's a, so it's a Hungarian horn tail, but no, it's not a baby. It doesn't look like a baby. Critter collection pin. So this may be a new series where they're going to sell pins of different critters, but on the back, we have an adoption certificate and it says Hungarian horn tail and there's a birthday on there. The Hungarian horn tail is one of the most ferocious of all the dragons. It's aggressive, angry, and would do anything to protect its offspring. Spring. And there's a magical menagerie vibe on the background of this pin backing. Packaging, packaging, packaging. That's so important to me at least. All right, next up we have Victor Crumb in his half transfigured state as a shark. And he is holding his wand and has a shark head. We can see some weeds from the Black Lake on the pin backing itself. It's a smaller sized pin. Very fun. Nicely designed. There's nothing I would say could be improved. I like the gold trim around it. I think that gives a nice shiny effect. I mean, silver might look a little bit better. It might fit with the gray of the shark head, but gold is good too. Just overall, great. Let's open up this. 
This has some really cool artwork on the front. Oh, look at that. All right, so we have the four champions and they are ready to enter the maze, which is the third task. And then on the other side, we have the Triwizard Cup port key that brought Harry and Cedric to the graveyard and ultimately to Voldemort. So we have Voldemort on there in his now human form. But what is inside? It's wooden, something wooden. It sounds like there's a marble in here. Maybe it's like one of those, it is, it's one of those marble games where you have to get, oh, it's a maze, duh. So it's a marble maze where you have to get the marble to the Triwizard Cup without falling into one of the holes. You can go, oh, there's the Sphinx. Oh, I already got it. So it's it's a very easy marble game. It's not very difficult. Got it on the very first try, but take a look at that. We have artwork on there. So you see Harry in the bottom corner and then the Triwizard Cup in the top corner. And then there are a bunch of holes that the marble can fall into. And if it falls into one of the holes, you gotta start from the, the beginning. I wouldn't have really thought about that. A maze, yeah, a marble maze representing the third task of the tournament. There is an Acromantula on here, a Dementor. Well, I guess it really isn't a Dementor. It's a Bogart, but it takes the form of a Dementor when Harry gets close to it. Very fun, and it looks like the same artist who did the box did the artwork for the back of the maze. All right, what have we here? It's green and it says Gillyweed, so this is representing Gillyweed. Now, I like that, I'm pretty sure this is a candle. It is, it's, ooh, it smells a little like, like a plant. I mean, it's supposed to smell like Gillyweed, but it actually smells like a plant. It has earthy undertones, not stinky, but like, like if you go to a pond, it smells a little bit like pond, but a sweet pond with flowers and different fragrances. I'm actually really impressed with the fragrance of this. Let's see, it says garden herb, green roots, and wet earth. I think that that is very accurate. Say anything studio, grow gills, swim underwater, gillyweed, and it was made for Lit Joy Crate. When it comes to candles, if it says like, oh, it's supposed to smell like this, or it's supposed to represent this, it usually never does. This does. So I'm really impressed. Really nice, and I like the bottle. I like that it looks like a potion ingredient, or you know, gillyweed is stored in here, so you could store this and display it on your potion shelf or burn it if you want to. Really nice. I am liking the box so far. All right, we have two Alohomora keys, two brand new Alohomora keys, both of which I have seen online, both of which look incredible and I can't wait to see them, but we're not gonna look at them just yet. All right, there's a little pin in here. I'm guessing this is gonna be a Potter's Stinks button badge. It is, and it's lenticular too, which is great. So it says, support Cedric Diggory, the real Hogwarts champion. And when you move it, it says Potter really stinks. Very fun lenticular badge. We've seen something like this before, but a great item to put in this box, specifically this box. All right, next up are these, which you guys helped me understand what they were for in the last video. So we're gonna put those aside with the keys because they go with the keys essentially. All right, what's this? What is this? Bookmark? Or is this scratch off? I don't wanna scratch it. So this is what I'm looking at. It's some artwork and we see some dragons and actually it's the four dragons and the golden egg is gold foiled. And then on the back, it says Ministry of Magic classification, a beast is the classification. Dragons are among the most ancient and powerful races of magical creatures and can be found all over the world. If you would like to read the rest of that, I will hold this up for you and you can pause the video. We'll wait for the spoiler sheet to see if it says, oh, what number did you get or whatever before we do anything with this because I don't want to ruin it. Let's see. This is, oh, this is really nice. This is a metal bookmark and it's the Yule Ball invitation. You have to represent the Yule Ball when you're talking about the Goblet of Fire and the Wizards tournament. So there is a dark blue tassel and it's a metal cut out bookmark of the Yule Ball invitation. Very nice. Beautifully cut out, beautifully designed. It feels like the Yule Ball invitation. And if you need a bookmark, this is gonna be a good option for you. This is heavy, very heavy. And it has a second task feel with all four of the champions and what they chose to use underwater for the second task. The top of the box here, we have Hogwarts Castle in the background and an owl flying around. Oh, it says dishwasher safe on the bottom of this and also art by Adrian Macho, who is the illustrator for those Slovak editions. So here is Harry Potter with his Gilly Weed, Cedric Diggory with the Bubblehead Charm, Victor Crumb with his Shark Transfiguration, and Fleur de Delacour and her Bubblehead Charm. For some reason I remember Fleur having something else, but I think it was a Bubblehead Charm. But in the background on the Harry Potter artwork, we can see the different characters that were taken 
from the four champions. I'm excited to see what this is. It says dishwasher safe. It's pretty big for a mug. Looks like a saucer. We got a saucer here. Oh, look at that. Giant squid on here and mermaids. I'll show you guys. Oh, it's a teapot. Is it just a teapot or is it a teacup too? There's another part in here. Yeah, so it's one of those teacup, teapot combination things. Really beautiful design and illustration. So you have the saucer, the teacup, and then the teapot fits on top like that. But let's take a look at this artwork. So on the teapot itself, we have the grounds of Hogwarts. So we have that owl flying and then Hogwarts in the background. And on this side, we see the Black Lake and the squid jumping out of it. Some nice embellishments and uh, design pattern on the top of the teapot. And then on the teacup, we see the four champions as we saw on the box of this beautiful piece. I like the designs surrounding this artwork. It feels very rich and like underwater plants and seaweed. And then the saucer, we have the mermaids and a giant squid. The really nice like seafoam green color to make it feel like you're in the Black Lake. Now my first thought when I saw the teapot was, we've seen this from Litjoy, but I've not seen this whole set, this whole combination. So I really like this and I like the flow of the artwork. I think it's cool to have something from one of the Harry Potter book illustrators. And just look at how everything's lined up so beautifully. Like this is really well designed. So on the teapot, we have artwork which shows above the Black Lake and then we have under the Black Lake and the bottom of the Black Lake on the saucer. Just really nice flow and design. Now I wouldn't drink tea, but I would drink coffee with this. There's something here which I'm pretty sure I've seen. I'm excited about that. This is another bookmark and it's another one of those magical creatures bookmarks. And we have the mermaids, which are also classified as beasts. Merfolk are a legendary and mysterious half-human, half-sea creature aquatic race, sometimes known as sirens, selkie, or Murrow, depending on their physical appearance, traits, and location around the world. Now this does not have any gold foiling to scratch off on the front, so I'm guessing the dragon bookmark is not supposed to be scratched. So I'm glad that we did not scratch it. And then we have that square art print, which we have seen in all of the Litjoy boxes, which takes the artwork from the box and puts it onto a collectible print that you can display. But we don't actually see this artwork, I mean, we see kind of part of it, but it's different artwork from what we're seeing on the box, which is pretty cool. So this is the art print itself showing the four champions and the Goblet of Fire spitting out a name. Is there a name on here? No, there's no name. So we don't know whose name is being spit out of the Goblet of Fire at this moment, but we can probably guess that it's Harry Potter's. Very nice. All right, so we still have the keys to look at and whatever is in this add-on box. Sounds like a puzzle. Litjoy does a lot of puzzles and it's probably gonna have this artwork on it. Oh, there's still this too. Okay, so there's more to open. We're not done yet. So far, I think this is a really strong box, especially if you like Goblet of Fire. This has nice subtle hints to the books. And that's what's great about subscription boxes in general is they usually go off of the text, the books themselves and not really the movies. Ooh, there's something big in here. <gasps> if this is a Mermaid blanket. Hold on, all right. Let's take a look at the puzzle. I was correct, there is a puzzle. It is a 300 piece puzzle that features that same artwork. I'm sorry, puzzle, I'm putting you down because I need to get to this blanket, but let's take a look at the puzzle. 300 piece puzzle, really nice artwork, love it. Let's put this box aside because this is a, I'm thinking, a blanket of the mermaid stained glass window in the prefect's bathroom. It is a very soft blanket. It feels and looks huge. This is a winner of an item right here. Wow, 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 wow. Look at this. I don't love that the mermaid looks like Elsa. That's my first thought, but I can get past that really quick. This is so vibrant in all of this. There's, there's probably a ton of stuff to look at. All right, so we have kind of the prefect wall or the framing of the stained glass itself. Hogwarts castle in the background. Looks like a willow tree, so that's probably the Whomping Willow. So we can kind of see the willow branches hanging down. And the mermaid is just sitting on a rock in the middle of the lake. Really, really nice. 
And again, super, super soft. One negative I'm finding is it's shedding. So there's a lot of blanket fuzz on my shirt right now. I'm not gonna clean it off, but if you see white specks and everything, that's it's from the blanket. So I'm sure that one wash would take care of that. All right, let's open up this next. So we have a black box, a nice black box, I would say. And on the front in gold foiling, it says, Come seek us where our voices sound. Where do we hear that song from? The Golden Egg. <gasps> I have to like open it for you guys so that you can get that same reaction and response. Ready? Whoa, whoa, whoa. It is metal. It's heavy has a really nice weight to it. And the best part of this thing, this very well might be the first golden egg that we've seen that opens. How do we open it though? Let's see. It opens somehow. Like I'm being extra careful with it. <gasps> oh, it's magnetic. Okay. It opens up. I am a little disappointed that there's nothing on the inside. Really cool to have a golden egg that opens. It's a little odd because, and I think this is a manufacturing thing, but there's a number two and a number three. Number two on here, and number three on the inside of here. The inside is not really finished how I think it should be finished, but it does open and close right back up. I'm just a little bit disappointed with the inside of the egg. So there's that number two and that number three telling the manufacturers which piece goes where. All of that said, this is something that was probably difficult to engineer. Even Noble Collection hasn't come out with a golden egg that opens. The outside is beautiful. This is a great piece for display. I like that it has a stand. The stand is connected, but it looks as though the golden egg has a stand. Really nice detail on here. It looks like the golden egg. We have that owl on the top. Really nice finish, shiny finish. So the outside is fantastic. The fact that it opens is fantastic. Well done, Litjoy. You have successfully created a golden egg that opens. It may be time to create another golden item too. All right, we will save these items here, these hooks, and take a look at the Alohomora collection keys from Litjoy. All right, I'll tell you guys, one of them is a Bobaton's carriage key and the other is a key to the Durmstrang ship. And this is the Bobaton's carriage key. <gasps> so nice. I love colored keys. Love, love, love them. And this is what I'm looking at. How amazing is this? Look at that. So we have the carriage there. We have Fleur Delacour's entry, which says Bobaton's L'Academie de Magique. And again, it's Fleur's entry to the Triwizard Tournament. So it's that fancy paper. And I'm looking at the back, there's a nice design on this keychain here. With moving wheels! Of course there are moving wheels, it's a Litjoy key. Very, very cool, very shiny front, really nice coloring, nice detail. Great design with a big B and two crossed wands on the door itself. And the two lit lanterns. And the key itself has this blue ribbon and the Bobaton's crest or coat of arms on the handle of the key, and then the shaft curls down to the key teeth. This reminds me almost of the Beauty and the Beast rose, like the coat of arms is the rose, and then this is the dome that protects the rose. And then, always my favorite part about Litjoy keys is the key ring that they include always matches the main color of the key and its design. So they don't just put silver key rings with keys that are mainly gold or keys that are black. So everything matches, nothing stands out, everything flows together. So let's put everything together. And there we have it the Bobaton's carriage key. The cool thing about Litjoy keys is it usually comes with one or two keychains, so you don't have to carry around the keys. If you wanted to put one of the keychains on your keys, your actual keys, you could do so or swap it out every once in a while. So they're very versatile if you want to display them or add a little bit of magic to your everyday by attaching the keychains to your car keys. All right, so before we take a look at the Durmstrang ship key, let's open up this. I don't know why I didn't put two and two together. Thanks to you guys who were like, Peter, those hooks are for the keys. So they're going to be coming out with different hooks for all of the keys that they've created, or at least the few that they've come out with already. I don't know if they're gonna go back and create hooks for some of their earlier keys, but we at least have them for the newer keys. And this hook has the same handle design as the Bobaton's key. So everything matches, everything looks great together. We're not gonna look at the Durmstrang hook yet because my guess is 
is it's going to show us what is on the handle of this key. And oh my word. <gasps> this is probably my favorite Lit Joy key. And I'm not like a Durmstrang fan or even like a big Goblet of Fire fan. So well designed. Are you guys ready to see this? Holy moly cannoli. Y'all know I am very serious when I say that. Please be double-sided. It's double-sided. <gasps> of course it's double-sided. What does it say on there? It says something on the shaft of the key, maybe something in Bulgarian or something. So we have the Durmstrang coat of arms on the top with that, I don't know if it's a stag skull or like a deer skull with the two maybe griffins or phoenixes. I don't, I don't know the Durmstrang coat of arms very well, but it's something like that. And it kind of zigzags down a little bit down to a D, which creates the key teeth. This thing is shy knee. Really nice weight too. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. This reminds me of the quality Quidditch supplies key that they put out. It was very bright and gold, gave a golden stitch kind of vibe. But this I feel like is a better made key than that one. That one felt a little bit on the thinner side. This feels a lot better made than the quality Quidditch supplies key, which was my previous favorite. And then we have, all right, let's just take a look at the key ring real quick because it's gonna be gold, just like the rest of the key and the keychains. This is really nice. So one of the keychains is a Durmstrang banner to celebrate Victor Crumb being in the, the Triwizard Tournament. And it's held up on a rod that looks like it has dragon feet on both sides of it. And then on the back, it mirrors the front. The other thing I love about LitJoy keys is they come in these velvet lined boxes, but there's also a velvet protective top piece that goes on top of the key. But look how beautiful it is when you're setting down the different pieces on that velvet top. It makes me feel like I'm at a jewelry store or a museum and they're taking out these gold pieces that I have the opportunity to purchase and they're displaying them on this beautiful black velvety piece of fabric. All right, and then the other keychain is the Durmstrang ship, which has a faux leather sail on it. Like, what? with that Durmstrang coat of arms on the sail. Look at that, we have some banners and are those? Oh, there's like some faces. They're not character faces, but some faces on the ship itself. I mean, it's it's the Durmstrang ship. Like this whole collection is so nice, so nice. And then you put it all together and it becomes one cohesive, beautiful Durmstrang key. Fan. Fantastic. All right, let's take a look at the last item, which is that Durmstrang key hook. And that's how you display it if you would like to. The thing I like about the hooks is we can see that coat of arm artwork or whatever artwork they choose to put on the handle of the key on the hook, but a larger scale. So we get all of the detail that may have been missed on the top of the key itself. Like I thought this was a really good, solid LitJoy box. That said, a lot of these items were add-ons. So I'm kind of mixing everything together. So let's see what the box consisted of in the spoiler sheet. So we have a newspaper written by Rita Skeeter about the Triwizard Champions. And it says, Triwizard Tournament Special by Rita Skeeter at the top. The Triwizard Champions are selected Harry Potter, Victor Crumb, Fleur Delacour, and Cedric Diggory. All right, so the Potter Stinks button. Support the real champion at the Triwizard Tournament. And this was designed by Tim Biren. And that is part of the box itself. Next up is the golden egg. Congratulations, you've just accomplished your first task in the Triwizard Tournament and retrieved the crate exclusive golden egg. Like the book, this golden egg replica opens its hinged sides to reveal a hollow and empty egg. Okay, that is more book accurate. I do remember that it was hollow on the inside. So I do like it more, but also it's like designed off of the movie version of the golden egg. So it's kind of a blending of the two. And then it says, but unlike the book, it won't screech loudly or give you a clue sung by Marfolk to help you and the other champions during your task at the lake. Read a Skeeter, Beetle, enamel pin. Be careful what you say and remember that not everything you read is true. This Beetle Animagus of our not-so-favorite reporter, Rita Skeeter, 
will twist your words and make a headline of your story for the Daily Prophet. And this was designed by Carella F-R-A underscore art. I really like this pin. Triwizard Tournament art print. You've been chosen by the Goblet of Fire to be part of the Triwizard Tournament. Join Harry, Fleur, Victor, and Cedric as they embark on this journey of dragons, riddles, lakes, and mazes. And this was done by at Seaside Spirit on Instagram or Adrian Macho. And he created a masterpiece of some of our favorite tournament characters. Yule Ball Invitation Metal Bookmark. Don't squeal too loud, but you've been asked to the Yule Ball. Whether you're from Hogwarts, Durmstrang, or Bobatons, all students get to participate in this fun celebration held on the 25th of December in the Great Hall. The Black Lake T for one set. Watch out for the giant squid, merfolk, and grindylows. This task is like no other. Solving the golden egg riddle was only part of the puzzle. Now you get to join the other champions as you search for your loved ones at the bottom of the Black Lake. Just don't forget your gillyweed. The stunning artwork by Seaside Spirit will make you feel like you are swimming alongside Harry, Crumb, Fleur, and Cedric. And I like that it's dishwasher safe. Mer People Adventure Card. This half-human, half-sea creature aquatic race is always a bit mysterious, and this card is no different. The Magical Merfolk artwork by Sophie underscore Volovic will make you feel just like you're swimming in the depths of the Black Lake during the Tri-Wizard Tournament. And this is part of the Adventure Card series by Lidjoy. Tri-Wizard Maze Wooden Labyrinth. You've made it to the third and final task of the Triwizard Tournament, and now must navigate through the maze grown on the Hogwarts Quidditch pitch. Watch out for the creatures that might get in your way. Whether it's a riddle from a sphinx or a bogart disguised as a dementor, you must work your marble through this labyrinth successfully and be the first to arrive at the Triwizard Cup without falling through a hole. And the artwork was done by David Eor2 Illustration. All right, so those are the items that were in the box itself. And the featured add-ons are the French Academy or Bobaton Academy of Magic key and the Dark Wizards or Durmstrang Institute key. I think this is another add-on, this other collectible card, the Gillyweed Candle, the Blanket, the other two pins, the hooks, the puzzle. Those would be some of the other add-ons that you could add to your Magical Crate. And coming next, the Magical Express. Magical Express will feature items related to traveling on the Hogwarts Express, including what to pack, iconic moments that occurred on the train, and homage to the train itself. Subscribers can renew on July 1st, and subscriber add-on week is set for July 4th. All right, let's take a look at some favorites and least favorites. I'm going to focus on things that were in the box itself as favorites and least favorites. I really love the Rita Skeeter pin. I think it's so well designed. It's clever. I love the card backing on here. That just makes it feel like Hermione has captured Rita Skeeter in a jar. While I don't think I will ever use this, I really like the design, the thought that was put into it. Each piece is a different part of the picture. For the golden egg, inside aside, it's really beautiful, well done. It's gonna make a really nice display piece. Least favorites, it's probably gonna be this. Even though it's it's clever, it's a maze, how do we incorporate the third task, which is a maze, into an item? How about a marble maze? I like the cleverness of it, and the artwork is nice, but I think this could have been executed a lot better, and it definitely feels like it's on the cheaper side, and it's it's not difficult at all to, to get through the maze. You guys have heard my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below what were your favorite items, what were your least favorite items, what did you think about the box as a whole, did you prefer the add-ons to the box items, so share with me and the rest of the Potter Collector community. If you would like to subscribe to LitJoy, check the description down below. There is a link as well as a coupon code to save you some money. If you have any questions about Harry Potter or collecting, feel free to leave a comment down below. You can also join the Potter Collector community on Instagram at the Potter Collector or on Twitter at Potter Collector. Now it's time to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, keep collecting. Thank you so much for watching, and if you're new here, welcome. We cover all things Harry Potter on the Potter Collector channel, like books, merchandise reviews, unboxings, Wizarding World of Harry Potter videos, and more. If you would like to subscribe, you can click right here. You can also check out a previously posted video right around here. If you have any questions about Harry Potter, feel free to leave a comment down below. I am happy to help.
but for now, I must go. We'll see you next time. Whoa, where'd he go?